عليه السلام وبالأسماء صلى الله Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Nehmedullah ta'ala ve nastafiru aşhedü en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike leh. Neşhedü enne seyyidina Muhammedin abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvacihi ve ashabi tabi khulafi rahşid mahadid min ba'di. Zemiyata lah tahkik. Huzuza mihru alamadi khulafi rasulü ala tahkik umar el mu'minin. Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar, Usman ve Ali ve ala bakır sabri tabi'in Ridvanullah Ta'ala aleyhi mecma'in Ya eyyuhal mu'minul hazirun Yetekullah Ta'ala Ve te'inna Allah hemen lezîn Ve teke ve lezîn hum muhsinun Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrafil enbiya ve mürselin Seyyidina Mevlana Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in All praises are due to Allah Lord of the universes He Jalawala says in the Holy Quran Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim had we sent down this Qur'an upon a mountain, truly you would have seen it humble itself and split apart from fear of Allah. These are examples we present to mankind so that they might make tafakkur. He is Allah and there is no ilah other than Him, knower of the invisible and the visible. He is the most gracious, the most merciful. He is Allah. There is no ilah other than Him, the King. The Holy One, the source of peace, the keeper of faith, the guardian, the majestic, the compeller, the superb. Glory to Allah. High is He above the partners they attribute to Him. He is Allah, the creator, the inventor, the bestower of forms. To Him belong the most beautiful names. Whatever is in the heavens and the earth is praising Him. And He is the mighty, the wise. Sadaqallah al-Azim. And may all peace and blessings be upon the noble messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi sallatu wa sallam, who said in a hadith recorded by Imam al-Jazuli in Dail al-Hayrat, There is no servant who makes salawats on me except that the salawat leaves his mouth and it passes every land and sea in the east and the west and says to them, I am the salawat of such and such a person which he made for Muhammad the chosen one والسلام, the best of Allah's creation and everything blesses him. From that prayer a bird is created for him which has 70,000 wings and in every wing there are 70,000 feathers and in every feather there are 70,000 faces and in every face there are 70,000 mouths in every mouth. There are 70,000 tongues and every tongue praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in 70,000 languages and Allah writes for the person the reward 
of all of that. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa la alihi Sayyidina Muhammad. May peace and blessings also be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. May peace and blessings be upon the guardians of the Shariat, the protectors of justice, the lovers of the Sunnah, the Ottoman Padishahs, and all those who stand for their honor until the last day. The Sultan is a shadow of Allah on earth. Whoever honors the Sultan, Allah honors him. And whoever hates the Sultan, Allah hates him. Sadaqallah Rasulullah. Ya ayuha mu'minun, O believers. Today is the day of Jummah, the first Jummah of Jamad al-Ahir, leading us into the blessed days of Rajab, Shaban, and Ramazan. May we prepare ourselves to welcome these holy months with the honor that they deserve. O believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed us to be honored. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Walakat karamna bani Adam. We have honored the children of Adam. But when mankind insists on dishonoring himself, when mankind insists on taking the clean and pure state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in, and contaminates it with dirtiness and with filth, with that dirtiness, mankind cannot go back home. Mankind cannot enter paradise. And dirtiness is not accepted in the presence of the Lord. As our master, Sahib al-Sayf, Shaykh Abdul Karim al-Kibris, Ya Rabbani, Sir, is saying, paradise is for the people who are clean. It's not for the people who are dirty, no. And anybody who claims, I am clean, must be following the orders of the Holy Prophet That kind of cleanness Allah is asking from us. Not to say, I'm washing every day, I'm taking shower every day, new clothes every day, I'm putting nice perfumes. But the smell that is coming from your ego, from your nafs, if Allah opens it to the world and the people smell it, they will fall down and die. So that is important. You must get rid of that smell. You must get rid of the inside dirtiness. That's why Islam came, to get rid of the characteristics of the ego. And the friends of Allah, they speak the truth. Holy Prophet ﷺ came to teach Bani Adam to return to the original state of honor. Just as he came to break the physical idols around the Kaaba, he came to clean the throne of Allah inside mankind, the hearts, and to purify them from the dirtiness that have taken over there. And his inheritors, the friends of Allah, continue that work. We are in the time of the Urs, of one of those great friends of Allah, Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi, Qadaslah Sir. He came to clean hearts and to bring the hearts back to the original state of being Allah's throne. He came at a time when there was nothing but believers around him, when there was nothing but hilafat, when there was nothing but ibadat. But still he came at that time to those clean ones physically to bring their hearts back to the original state of being Allah's throne. And his mission was nothing other than the mission of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. This is why he said, I am the servant of the Qur'an. I am the dust on the path of Rasulullah ﷺ. Whoever says anything than this about me, I am separate from him and from his words. And Hazrat Mevlana, like his Sultan, Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ, came to break mankind of their bad characteristics and of the slavery of the ego. Hazrat Mevlana is speaking about the dangerous about the danger of the nafs, saying, a person said, I thought that if I put the chain of tawbah around the neck of the dog of the nafs, if I make him old that way, maybe I could end his rebellion. But whenever he sees a rotting corpse, 
he breaks the chain and runs for it. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this dog of the nafs. I do not know what I should do to this dog of the nafs. And Hazrat Imelana is further explaining the struggle inside mankind between his good nature and his evil nature, saying, the human is like a jungle where wild animals they roam. We have to be very careful and on guard not to get ripped into pieces. Inside us there are thousands of wolves, thousands of pigs. There is clean, there is dirty, there is beauty, there is ugliness, thousands of characteristics. If one of these characteristics is heavier, we are under its influence. Sometimes the wolf inside you takes control of you, then you look like a wolf. Sometimes you may become as beautiful as Hazrat Yusuf, with a face as beautiful as the moon. Goodness, evil, hate, grudges keep on flowing from heart to heart through secret channels. Every moment there is a different thing that emerges in the heart. The human sometimes turns into a shaitan, sometimes into an angel, sometimes into a trap, and sometimes into a beast. This is the essence of Hazrat Mevlana's teachings. So what happens when man lets his beast nature take over and acts like an animal? What happens when Bani Adam become like donkeys? Sultan al-Awliya, Shaykh Mawlana Muhammad Nazim al haqqani Sir is saying, Shaitan said, I will make mankind my donkeys. I am not leaving one of them to be free, but I will ride on him. And the seal of prophets والسلام, advised, O my Ummat, all nations are going to be either a rider or a ride. O my nation, don't be rides, but try to be the riders. Don't be donkeys, be lions. Can anyone ride a lion? But 21st century people are happy to be shaitan's donkeys. Why are you not trying to be lions that will never allow someone to ride them? Everyone fears lions. That is the honor of mankind. But shaitan did his worst for 21st century people and made the majority its donkeys. You now may find only a handful of people who are created like lions. No one can approach to ride them. O oh people, now Eulia are saying, why are you not going to be lions? Why are you going to be donkeys? Donkeys never give you honor, but to be a lion gives you honor. That is his last summary for people from heavens. Oh people, don't be donkeys, be lions, and you will reach the highest level of heavens. Otherwise, if you are not lions, shaitan will ride on you, and you will go wherever it takes you. May Allah forgive us. How do we break out of being donkeys? Hazrat Mevlana Rumi is saying, laziness, greed, and selfishness have caused you to behave stubbornly and put your ego in charge. You are like the donkey that runs from its burden. Its master calls it back saying, watch out you stupid creature. If you disappear from my sight, wolves will come at you from every direction and eat you. Don't run from me. And the burden you have to carry, I am your spirit. You are a donkey because you are controlled by your ego. Oh selfish creature, don't you know that the dominant quality determines the nature of a thing. It is the dominant, the strongest quality that determines the nature of a thing. Allah intended for you to behave like a horse and not a donkey because the horse responds when the master says, come. Al-Mustafa was put in charge of the stable yard of your animal nature. Without taking a master, this ego is not going to be trained. And when the egos become loose, when the egos of the whole world become donkeys, then man loses his honor. 
The man who follows his ego non-stop and does not submit to a master is drunk and he's poisoned. And he is poisonous and he will destroy everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created with love. Mevlana says, how happy is the one who keeps his ego down. Oh, the attitude of the one who puts himself up is as high as a mountain. Remember, arrogance, praising yourself, and self-righteousness are deadly poisons. Fools become drunk on this poisonous wine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us and given us example through those who drank this poisonous wine and whose ending was disaster. The Holy Quran is a history book full of the examples of the whole of mankind from the beginning to the last of those who became the donkeys of shaitan and who were punished for their arrogance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that history so that we might learn and we might act differently. And one of the greatest examples of ego drunkenness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives in the Holy Quran is Nimrud. He is so low that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not even mention his name in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us the heights of Nimrud's arrogance, saying in Surah Al-Baqarah, Bismillah rahman rahim Haven't you looked at the one who argued with Ibrahim about his Lord just because Allah had given him power? Ibrahim said, My Lord is he who gives life and death. He said, I give life and death. Ibrahim replied, but it is Allah who causes the sun to rise from the east. So now you make it rise from the west. So the disbeliever was stunned. And Allah does not guide the zalimin. Surah al Our Shaykh Sahib al Sayyif is telling us how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with the arrogance and pride of Nimrud the tyrant. He is saying, when Ibrahim salam came to Nimrud saying, I'm asking you to turn your way to the Lord of the heavens and the earth. He says, is there any other Lord than me? I am the one. He said to him, you don't have anything. Why you are claiming to be the Lord? He said, I have everything. I'm the Lord of the earth. If your Lord is the Lord of the skies, then I'm the Lord of the earth. So I'm challenging him. Tell him to send the armies. Nimrud. Today's 21st century people have the same attitude, same attitude, not different than that one. That one at least had a little bit of power in his hand, worldly power. But today's people, they have nothing, zero, but still acting and trying to live like those Nemruts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us examples about them. What happened to them saying, take lesson. The Quran Karim is not just saying words and walk away, it is a lesson to us. Either you take lesson or you are going to become a lesson. No other way. So Namrud declared lordship and was saying, I'm asking to fight with that one. And Allah is saying to him, say to him, I am sending my soldiers to him. Prepare. And he was preparing and waiting, saying, where is it? looking around. Ibrahim salam was saying, don't worry, it's coming. Look at the sky. And all of a sudden, this darkness appeared in the sky. What is that? Mosquitoes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to him, you are worse than a mosquito. Allah is teaching a lesson saying, you are less than a mosquito. You are declaring lordship to me, I don't need to bring armies to you. Sending you little mosquitoes. And those mosquitoes finish Nemrut and all of his army. And one broken legged mosquito crawled into Nemrut's nose and ate his brain. 21st century people became tyrants. 21st century people became donkeys. 21st century people are declaring themselves lords of the earth and denying the existence of Allah 
They're eating the rights of the poor ones. They're eating the rights of those who have less. They're taking the rights of the earth and the skies. With their greediness, they're swallowing everything and destroying everything. So Allah now is terrifying mankind with something smaller than a mosquito, a virus. 120 nanometer virus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is causing countries to shut down because of this virus, to remind mankind of their weakness, to warn mankind, slow down, think. This microscopic thing, it is shutting down the biggest countries, the airport, the economy, transportation. Armies cannot destroy it. Showing to mankind, don't declare lordship. You cannot even protect yourself from this tiny, tiny creature. Man is weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Allah wants to turn to you in mercy. But those who follow their passions want you to turn away from him, far, far away. Allah wants to lighten your difficulties for you. For man was created weak. Surah Azim. We have to understand our weakness before Allah. If we think we are strong, we become a tyrant. We have to understand that we need help against the wild animals that are inside of us. We need to understand that we have done wrong. When we do that, Allah wants to turn to us. And Allah wants to make things easier for us. And that ease comes from sending the unbreakable rope, from sending those who are connected to the unbroken chain of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. That help comes from the Wali and Murshida, from the one who is going to rescue you from becoming a Zalim and bring you back to the safety of servanthood. Who is the greatest? Abdullah, the greatest servant of Allah. Sayyidina Muhammad Listen and remember and think about the dua that he والسلام, made in Taif when he was driven out of the city by the children and the slaves, his feet bleeding. He raised his hands to Allah and he said, O oh Allah, I complain to you of my weakness and of my lack of support. And of my humiliation, I have been made to receive. Ya Rahimin, you are the Lord of the weak, and you are my Lord. To whom do you leave me? To a distant person who receives me with hostility? Or to an enemy you have given power over me? As long as you are not displeased with me, I do not care what I face. I would be happier with your mercy. I seek refuge in the light of your face by which all darkness is dispelled and both this life and the life to come are put in the right course against pulling your anger or being the subject of your anger. To you I submit until I learn, until I earn your pleasure. Everything is powerless without your support. How beautiful are those words of the Holy Prophet And what came after this dua? The Miraj, Medina and Mecca. The opening of the flag of Islam. If we make the dua with the same heart, we will find our honor again. Our honor as Bani Adam lies in being Allah's servants. Our honor lies in being servants of the Qur'an, being the dust under the feet of the messenger. Our honor lies in following those who lead us to the path of the Prophet. In these darkest days, in darkest times of Ahir Zaman, we're making dua to Allah and complaining of our weakness. We're asking for Him to send us strength to be His servants 
and to do the work of his prophet. We're asking to be connected to and to submit to and obey their friends. We're asking for an end to tyranny and cruelty. We're asking for safety from curse and diseases. We're asking for a return of justice. We're asking for a return of the sultans. We're asking for the Sahib al-Zaman. Amen. Astaghfirullah. 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 Lazim al-Azim. La ilaha illa wa alhayr qayyum wa atibu lahi. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك الحمد شيء كبير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك الحمد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك الحمد لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أنت من الظالمين صبح كدوس نعم بن رب الملائكة مرة صبح كدوس نعم بن رب الملائكة مرة صبح كدوس نعم بن رب الملائكة إن دين إلا الله الإسلام قام صلاة Sayyidina Maulana Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Fill up the front rows Straighten your lines Tighten your lines Shoulder to shoulder